Hey everyone, Jake from Optimus Futures here, bringing you another tutorial. And in today's video, I'll be showing off two new features that we've added to Optimus Flow. Specifically, these features are revolved around order entry. And the features I'm speaking of are automated order entry. We have two new types. They're called scheduled orders and time split orders. Now, I'll get into those in a second, but first let me show you where you can find these throughout the platform. So essentially, any place you can enter an order on Optimus Flow, these two new automated order entry features will be available. So as you can see, I have my side panel or my trading panel enabled on my chart right now. And right under the stop loss and take profit, the bracket order configuration section, you'll find a new section called placing automation. And you can see if you drop down or you click the drop down menu, there's two types, scheduled and time split. You can see that the same thing on my dome on the right hand side of my platform, same order entry screen just for my dome and you can see placing automation. I have it set to none right now. Of course, if you don't use either uh, panels here, you could of course pull up the order entry window. You'll find automated orders under placing strategy. It's the same configuration. So now that we've covered where this is located on the platform, let's dive into what these do. So scheduled orders are pretty self-explanatory. This strategy will send your order at a specified time. So let's get into this. In order to specify a time, all you need to do is select scheduled under order automation, and then go ahead and click on this cog wheel directly to the right of scheduled. And that'll open settings for this specific form of automation. In our case, we chose scheduled. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. There's not too much here that needs to be configured. All you need to do is select a date and a time. And at that time, your order will execute. So in order to adjust these parameters, all you need to do is highlight either the month, the date or the year, and then the hour or the minutes, the time that you want to adjust. So for example, let's say, as you can see, it's around 318 right now in my local time. And let's say tomorrow I want to place an order at the US cash open. All I need to do is click on the date. Now to adjust it, you have three ways of doing so. You could either use your mouse wheel to scroll up or down. You could use your keyboard and press the up or down arrow, or you can manually type in on your keyboard. So tomorrow is April 16th. Let's say I type in 4-16 for those US clients out there. Um, and then let's say I want to do it at 9.30 a.m. We're located in the East Coast, so 9.30 is our U.S. stock open. So I go ahead, and like I said, I could scroll up on my mouse. There's 9. And then I could type in, if I want to, 30 for 9.30. And then, of course, a.m. or p.m., same thing. Just use your mouse wheel up or down or your keyboard. Just do the inverse of what it's currently selected to. And there we have it. On April 16th, 2021. I'll place an order at 9.30 a.m. Once you have this configured, all you need to do is back out. And we're ready to essentially place our order. Now, don't forget to, of course, adjust your quantity. Choose which account you want to execute your order from. And then choose your time and force. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you are executing orders like I am, maybe a day in advance, you do want to keep in mind or stay conscious of the time and force setting that you use. Although the order won't execute until the time you actually place it, just remember that if you plan on holding the trade for a longer term or, you know, if you're placing something like a limit or a stop and that price doesn't get filled, make sure you're consciously active of what you use here. If you expect that the market may move in, you know, a different direction and may not get filled, if you're using a day order, regardless of when that order goes through, if it's not filled in that same day, and you have a day order, it's going to cancel at the end of the day. So all I'm saying is just be conscious, again, of the time and force settings you use. Um, they really don't go into effect until your order is actually sent off of Optimus Flow, but something I'd like to, you know, keep in mind. So other than that, you can set a stop loss and a take profit just like you would do with any other order. So feel free to use that at your disposal as well. Now, let's say I have everything configured here as I like. I can go ahead and place my order. Let's do something simple and let's do a buy order on the ES June contract. Um, 
of a quantity of 10 at the market. So let's go ahead and press yes. And now you'll see. Typically, when you place a market order, you expect to get filled immediately, right? Well, you'll notice on Optimus Flow now, underneath our automation section, you'll see it says some strategy is active. And if you click on that, you'll see your order placing strategies. And this essentially shows you what is going on on the back end with the new forms of automation and what the current status is. So as you can see, you can see the start time of when I initiated it. And if you look at the parameters, that's my, you know, time that I actually like the order to be executed at. And you can see under status, it still says it's processing. So you know it hasn't been filled yet. Um, and then under the name, of course, you see what type it is. So I guess we haven't gotten into time split yet, but you'll see how that uh, differentiates when we go ahead and do that. Now, something we've also added recently, and that kind of loops back into this, is you'll notice in the top right-hand corner of Optimus Flow, we've added a couple new icons. You'll notice this robot-looking icon is green. That means you have some sort of automation going. And if you click on this green robot, you'll be brought back to the same exact screen. So regardless of if you have your chart open or not, or you choose a different symbol and you may accidentally not see this, just remember if you see this green robot up in the top right, that means you have some sort of scheduled or time split order in effect and it's waiting to go through. So just keep that in mind when using automation. Um, up in the top right as well, um, the shopping bag you see here represents positions and then the cart represents open orders. So um, that's good to know as well. And then you'll see this little refresh wheel. That just means you have an update available. So these features are useful as well. Um, not too important for the topic of this video, but this is new and some people aren't sure what those are about. So good to know. All right, so now that we covered how to actually place these orders, let's take a step back and actually watch it happen in real time. So again, if I want to monitor any automated strategy I have currently working, all I need to do is click on that little robot or click where it says some strategy is active and I can go ahead and manage it here. Let's say, for example, I don't want to wait until 930 tomorrow. Let me just click cancel. That will obviously get rid of it and you'll see there's no more working automation. Now, it still leaves it here. So if you don't want to see this, you know, clutter up the screen at all, just go ahead and click remove or clear finished and that'll get rid of it and give you a clean slate. So now let's go ahead and actually watch something happen in real time. So let me go ahead and adjust the time here. Set it to today's date and let me adjust the time just so we do get filled. Now it's about 324 here. So let's see if I can do this quick enough. I'm going to put it at 325. Go ahead and click market. And let's go ahead and wait. We should theoretically have about five more seconds or so until this order gets filled. There you go. Uh, I ironically have my chart set to a one minute chart. So if you haven't noticed, we do have a countdown timer in the bottom right. So that's how I knew we were getting close. And as you can see, the second it hit 325 and my local time, of course, and if you needed to, you could refer back right up to the top right. We have a, a clock right in Optimus Flow. Our order got executed. So I can, as you can see, very simple yet very effective. So for those orders looking, or excuse me, those traders looking for some sort of, you know, automation when it comes to timed orders, this is going to be perfect for you. All right. So next up, we have time split orders. Uh, we flattened out of that previous position. We're starting from a clean slate. When you're ready to set up a time split order, of course, click the drop down menu under placing automation, choose time split, and then of course, click on the cogwheel to access your settings. Now, a time split order is a strategy that will divide the size of your order into equal parts and send them into a few steps according to the specified display quantity and selected time interval you have here. Now you can see there's four fields that can be adjusted. Your interval, va interval value, all it is is taking the interval of whatever step you have applied. So for example, you see I have this set to 10, my interval set is set to seconds. So this is saying every 10 seconds, my order will execute. If you click the drop down menu and look at the different options, it kind of explains itself. If I set this to minute, every 10 minutes, my order will execute. Hours, every 10 hours, and days, every 10 days. So if you have a specified time frame in mind, 
that you want your automated orders to go through, just go ahead and first set up the value. So let's say, for example, I bought 25 and then I put this on minutes every 25 minutes or every quarter of the hour. This will execute an order. Now, the display quantity is the actual number of lots that will be executing for you every time your interval value and interval step are hit. So if I put this back to 10 seconds, and as you can see in the top right, I have a total quantity still of 10 for my order execution menu here. So this is saying every 10 seconds, the platform will execute a quantity of one until I reach a total quantity of 10. Now, if you are working with numbers, I encourage you to work with numbers that are divisible from one another. For, so for example, you know, two or 12 divided by two is six. So if you have a number, you know, that works well with one another, it's, you know, divisible. I would encourage you to use those type of overall quantities. Um, that is actually what display quantity variance is for. So if you are working with the number, let's say, for example, you do nine divided by 12, it's not divisible, right? I mean, of course, you know, it gives you a fraction, but there's no partial futures positions or, you know, partial quantity in the futures market. So that's where quantity variance comes into play. Let's say, for example, you have a total quantity of nine on set to my order entry on my chart screen. And I have here my dis uh, display quantity set to two. The platform does not round down for you. So if you execute this order and I set my quantity to nine here, you're gonna end up with a total quantity of 10. It's always gonna round up to the next closest whole number. So if you use a display quantity variance and do the math and put in that fraction in there, if you only wanted a total lot of nine, you could do so as long as you do the math right here and enter that in in quantity variance. So that's what that's for. Just make sure you don't go over the whole number if that's what your intention is to do so, you know, just cap off at that whole number. So just keep that in mind. But rather than continue to talk about it, let's actually get into this and see how it works. So I'm gonna set my quantity back to 10. That way I get a nice divisible number. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, place a typical market order. So right when I execute, we should technically get a quantity of two. In 10 seconds later, another quantity of two should go in and it should keep on doing this every 10 seconds until I reach a total quantity of 10. So let's do it. So as you can see, like expected, we got filled up the market with a quantity of two. Should give it about five more seconds now and we should get another two lot order executed. There we go. Another two lot order. We're currently with the total of four and you see we now have the average price of both. Let's give it another few seconds. Six. So as you can see, this is pretty powerful. Can be used in a you know unique amount of situations um, in a plethora of different time frames, different quantities. It's really up to you as to how you want this to work. Um, I really just stress, you know, if like I said, you are doing some sort of number that isn't divisible with when within one another, uh, you could run into issues with that. So that's what that variance is for. Let's just show that off and show you how it works just in case uh, you do try and do that and you end up with, you know, a number you weren't expecting. So let's go back to that scenario that I mentioned quantity of nine. And I have my display quantity set to two. Let's make it a little quicker this time so we can see it happen even faster. So I'm going to put it the interval to five. So this is saying every five seconds, I'm going to execute two orders. Let's go ahead and place this in here. We start with two. On to four. Six. Eight. Now right here, you're in a unique situation where, okay, you wanted nine, but we're at 10, you know, we're at eight. And because you have the quantity set to two and there's no variance involved, you can expect, like I mentioned, to get filled for 10 total orders. So as long as you do the math and enter in your percentage in there as to what you want it to essentially round down to or round up if you prefer, that's what the variance is gonna be used for. So feel free to utilize that if you like, but in my opinion, 
it makes it a whole lot easier like you saw if you just work with quantities and uh, total lot size that are divisible with one another. But that's about it for today's video. As you can see, they're both fairly simple, but they can use be used, uh, potentially used very effectively. So we hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions on, you know, these new scheduled or time split automated orders, please let us know. Uh, we'll link the community down below. We'd love for you guys to participate. We really want to grow the community and, you know, have traders and our, the rest of our support team help you out. So we'd love it if you would participate there. Um, the YouTube section, comment section down below is useful as well. So feel free to post any of your questions there too. Uh, again, we hope you enjoyed and have a great day.